and above Lord of the Rings. Oh! Mark Lawrence wrote a better first line than J.R.R. Tolkien in The Fellowship of the Ring. All right, the next book. Poppy War. The Poppy War by Arf Gwang. Do you want to read this opening line? I, yeah. I actually want to hear you say this. Do I got it on my show? Uh, you yeah, must, I do. You do. Uh, I... Uh, yeah, I'd love for you to say... I liked the just, book Just well say enough. the first line and stop after that, okay? Great. Deal? Deal. All right. I'm ready. Because I don't want to read this first line. I read this book a while ago. Yeah, so what's the first line, Rich? Take your clothes off. This sounds so mean. S- say it. <laughs> but if George, if we did an interview with George R. R. Martin, I'd be like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome everyone to the Two to Ramble episode. My name is Richard. My name is Austin. And today we're doing a tier list video continuing from first lines of fantasy. We're ranking them. We're seeing right now we got The Hobbit in first place. And then Eye of the World in second. And, and we got so a bunch of other stuff in there. <laughs> and so we're tier listing in from our last video. We have S, A, B, C, D, and F tier. And of course, on the very bottom, last time, you know, we've had Rings of Power. We Wheel had time, season Wheel time. one. You know, let me change that to season two. Hold there. Episode eight. Thank Specifically. You. Thank so, you, uh, because there's a difference. <laughs> I want to be specific. I enjoyed my time so, in season two. Episode until eight. Until episode eight. Just what? Just specifying. Season two. Specifying. Yes, thank so, you. So we are tier <laughs> ranking. We are t- this is a part two from last week. We had part one. We were tier ranking these first lines from fantasy books. What are the best? What makes a good first line? If, if you're interested in that video, check it out in the description below yeah. or the little card if you want to check that one out first. But exactly. we're going to get right into it. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. Next okay. one is we're Mistborn. Start, yeah, we're starting off with Mistborn. A good all one right. to start this off with, all right? And there won't be a part three, by the way. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we picked up 40 books. This is – we got – well, we picked did half of them last time, half of them this time. It, this is Mistborn, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Go ahead. One of the my favorite uh, authors of all time. Mm. Oh, yeah, you haven't read the book. <laughs> favorite author. I've only read like what? Two books of his. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even finish Stormlight. Just fake the reviews. <laughs> Mistborn. Here's the first line. Ash fell from the sky. If it stops there, I have to give it like D. <laughs> that's it. Like you know, I'll what? be honest. If it's like, if we're just judging the first sentence, I may even go F. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing: give me like uh, another sentence or two. Go ahead. I don't want further. No. I, I, uh, look. Yeah, okay. Okay. Where where are Hold we? On. Right here. All right, let, let me get this one. I'll okay, take care of okay. this guy. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna give you more than you just got, Ash because yeah, we've yeah. given the other books like a. A line or two here. Yeah, for those two that are just tuning in the part two, we've basically been giving either a sentence or the paragraph to get you into the field. Whatever the, the full thought Yeah, the is. full thought. I, I will be fair. The full thought is Ash fell from the sky. That's the whole paragraph. I think we should judge it on that. I think we're judging it on I that, Rich. Yes, you're right. I, I'm looking at it. You're right. It so, okay. is the full thought. I will say this personally. Brandon Sanderson, you are my favorite author. But I think we're gonna have our first F. Uh, F? No, come on, Ash. It's <laughs> it's it's D. It's D. There's worse. There's worse. Is also, there worse? It's also it's not a bad line. It's so it's saying Ash fell from the sky. It's ooh. Why is it Ash falling? I'm ooh, just not curious at all. It, it's <sighs> so boring. I'll, I'll give you F, but with the caveat of Sanderson. You're I the, love the book. Sanderson, you're the <laughs> it's goat. Great. Yeah, Sanderson's amazing. But if we're just judging first lines, okay, and we're being very harsh critics. Mm-hmm. I'll give you F. Yeah. <laughs> La- last part one, we had A S's through C's. We're starting this video off hectic. We're, We're starting, starting off heavy. mean. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I I would love it. I can't remember, but I think Name of the Wind has a better first line. And I hate the book. <laughs> oh, that, that's the next one on the list. I know. You ready? Okay. Uh-huh. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, the King Killer Chronicles. This is the first line, sir, from Name of the Wind. It was night again. The Waystone Inn lay in silence, and it was a silence of three parts. That's great. 
That's a great first line. It's a great opener. Now, why do you? Why does that line work for you? I mean, the last end, of course, given questions, silence in three parts. One, I do really enjoy that following uh, couple I sentences that, yeah. of how it describes the three sciences. Yeah. Wonderful. Why don't you read that? Can you read, or do you not have um, it? No, I think we got it over you. here. Name we got it there. Okay, let's read the whole part here. Because I, I really get, enjoy all of that. Now, what do you guys like a podcast episode where we just read a book to you? You know, just sit down and... <laughs> oh, my... Okay, look, <laughs> if Sniper Wolf can get away with just doing a react... Where, just watches a TikTok video and barely says anything. Why can't we get away with just reading a whole book to you and not commentating? And then not review books, just have part three, part four, part five. and become... Why not? Why don't We're you already... guys want an inferior version of an audio book? <laughs> <laughs> Here are my squeaky voice go, Ash fell from the sky, man. Uh, okay, I'm having trouble finding the first page How? of this one. Uh, uh, oh, I'm screwing up. Hold on. Let me find this immediately. The name of the... Here we go. Uh, it was... Wow. Here it is. Okay. You want the whole part? Yeah. This is the name of the wind, everybody. It was night again. The Waystone Inn lay in silence, and it was a silence of three parts. The most obvious part was a hollow, echoing quiet made by things that were lacking. If there had been a wind, it would have sighed through the trees, set the inn sign creaking on its hooks, and brushed the silence down the road like trailing autumn leaves. If there had been a crowd, even a handful of men inside the inn, they would have filled the silence with conversation and laughter, the clatter and clamor one expects from a drinking house during the dark hours of the night. If there had been music, but no. Of course there was no music. In fact, there were none of these things, and so the silence remained. Inside the waystone, a pair of men huddled at one corner of the bar. They drank with quiet determination, avoiding serious discussions of troubling news. In doing this, they added a small, sullen silence to the larger, hollow one. It made an alloy of sorts, a counterpoint. The third silence was not an easy thing to notice. If you listened for an hour, you might begin to feel it in the wooden floor underfoot and in the rough splintering barrels behind the bar. It was in the weight of the black stone hearth that held the heat of a long dead fire. It was in the slow back and forth of a white linen cloth rubbing along the grain of the bar. And, in, and, and it was in the hands of the man who stood there polishing a stretch of mahogany that already gleamed in the lamplight. That is so good. You hate the name of the wind, but you gotta appreciate that. My don't God, you? Patrick Croft is such a good writer. He's so good now, at now Rich. specifically writing things, <laughs> plotting things. I think he's lacking, but damn, writing things is good. But Rich, we can't judge it on that whole page. That's a little unfair. It's a little. So unfair. if we're just judging it for the beginning of it, saying it was night again, the waste of an inn lay in silence, and it was a silence of three parts. I think we give that. A top of B. I don't think it's A yet. I'll agree with you on that. Okay. Top of B is going to go there. Um, Not even kidding. Let's look into the copyright things. If we could just plagiarize. (laughs) 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 Just imagine. We we become an audiobook channel. And all of a sudden, all all these authors look at us and like, you can't do that. (laughs) You can't do that. (laughs) You just read my book. (laughs) You can't. That's illegal. (laughs) Page two coming next week from the name of the book. Oh, God. Ooh. (laughs) I kind of want to make a meme channel of we just make the worst type of content available. I got an idea. Yeah. End of every podcast episode, we just add a new page. We read a new page of the book until we finish it, like in two years. (laughs) (laughs) Let us know what you think. (laughs) If anybody wants that. Okay. Quick ad break here so Austin and I can make some money. He means provide you all with a valuable product. Displates are cool. I guess. That's right. Richard and I are sponsored by Displate. If you don't know what they are, they are stainless steel metallic posters that you can put up anywhere in your house, office, and even better, near your bookshelf. Oh, yeah. Displate posters feature incredible collections from artists all over the world, featuring art from your favorite series, The Wheel of Time, Stormlight Archive, Lord of the Rings, and pretty much anything your heart desires. These posters are super easy to put up, as you can see Richard doing so wonderfully on screen. Every display comes with a paint-safe leaf that you just stick to the wall, and then you peel this foil off the back of a magnet, stick that magnet to the leaf that you just put on the wall, and boom, you put your display right there. 
With the holidays coming up, Displate is offering a 32% off your purchase of one to two Displates using the code 2 to ramble And 38% off if you purchase three or more Displates using the code 2 to ramble Why couldn't they just give them 40% off? Uh, 38% is great. Great, Richard. Not great enough. It needs to be a nice full number, divisible by 10. I, I'm just a messenger. Uh, di- Displays paying us for this. You can't just, that wasn't part of the script. You can't just complain about the whole. Th- th- useless. I swear. You're absolutely useless. Uh, this next one we have is Narnia, but with a caveat of I didn't pick book one of Narnia because book one of Narnia, here's the opening line for book one. It's once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. It's a it's children's book and so forth, but here's why I picked book three, The Voyage of Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. This is book three, The Narnia Chronicles. This is the line to open with. You ready? Mm-hmm. There was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. That's real good. Banger <laughs> first line. That is so good. Can, can you help me explain why it's so good? The... I mean, it almost deserved it. And then you think, then you go back and think about their name. Like, okay, best, I think some of these best lines are the yeah. ones where the ending makes you go, wait a minute, and then go back to the beginning of You're the You're onto line. something. And it's that self where you have to think back to what they just said. And it's, yeah. it's the non linear thinking of a line. Great point. Because it changes, it changes your perspective on what you already read. You go, yeah. Weird name, and then almost deserved it. Wait a minute, deserved <laughs> what? What about his name? The scrub part? The, the, loved it. Like, I just met Eustace. It's such a... Eustace. Eustace. Almost deserved it. So me. is it that? Is it Eustace similar to useless? Is it the <laughs> scrub part? What part of the name? Why is this a name that is not great deserving-wise? What is this? <laughs> I think bottom of S. I love it that I much. Agree. So right below... Uh, Come on. Above Harry Potter. You know, something about that Harry Potter opening line of a privet drive and there was nothing, no nonsense. Thank you very much. Just the, mm, just the, mm, 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 mm. come on. It's so magical. Give it to me. All right, rock, paper, scissors. All right. One, one game. One That's game. It. Rock, okay. paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Damn it. Let's go. Here we go. Very next one we have is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Fantastic book. If you want to check out our review of Piranesi, it'll be in the description or in a card somewhere above there. We really love the book. The book was actually one of our book clubs of the month in our exclusive Patreon. I beat you to it, Rich. <laughs> Usually Rich is the one plugging it, but $10 a month. You can nice. join our Patreon. We talk about books with people, and we have a book club once a month in our private Discord. It's amazing. And there's yeah. also community book clubs. All right, but let's talk Piranesi, okay? Piranesi. This, this opening line. You ready? When the moon rose in the third northern hall, I went to the ninth vestibule to witness the joining of three tides. Oh, something about that. The mystery. The, the strange word choices or the strange naming of things. The year of... Uh... The, the, the numbers used. The third northern hall. The ninth vestibule. And us reading the book, that's all very relevant. Yeah, exactly. But... I really love Susanna Clark's writing. Yeah. It, okay. I think this would be a good way to describe it is Susanna Clark writes a fantasy book like she's in the style of a sci-fi book. Uh... It has a similar feel of mystery, curiosity, of like a sci-fi book often will have just this assumption of doesn't really hold your hand. And it just like, Here's this world. It's crazy, weird, and I'm not going to explain it to you. You're going to have to figure it out along the way. Fantasy typically has a bit more hand-holding of describing things in more detail to you to so for you to understand. This one is very much, you don't understand, you're going to figure it out, maybe. Uh, and I love that. Yes, and I want to add on to that mm-hmm. with only one statement of, I think this is true from what I've read so far. Piranesi specifically has the best character voice I've ever read. Not just the, not the best character. You know, there's great character arcs and everything, but as a character voice, the way the prose is written from this mm-hmm. character's point of view, so perfect. Perfect mm-hmm. character voice. And I was unbelievably invested in because of how much it suspended my disbelief of this as a real character. Felt so real. 
Highly recommend Piranesi. Yeah, I think pretty close, if not equal to Terry Pratchett on character, character voice. voice. Character yeah. voice is that's one, one of, his, of yeah. one of his highlights that yeah. Terry Pratchett can do. And we have some Discworld books coming up. Some more, Wonderful. some more for you. Some Always more, need more. More Richard. We could have we could have just done all forty Discworld books. 42, sorry. 42 Discworld. Like books. I said, that's part three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where are we putting Piranesi here? Mm. I'm thinking right up, you know, I'm thinking, let's put it right next to her other book, Jonathan Norrell, Mr. Strange. Right below it. I think right above. Right, I'll give you right above. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bias that we've read that. I'll take that. I'll take yeah. that. All right. The next book. Poppy War. The Poppy War by Arf Gwang. Do you want to read this opening line? I I actually want to hear you say this. Do I got it on my shelf? Uh, Yeah, I do. You do. I... (laughs) Yeah, I'd love for you to say... I liked the book well enough. Just say the first line and stop after that, okay? Great. Deal? Deal. All right. I'm ready. Because I don't want to read this first line. I read this book a while ago. Yeah, so what's the first line, Rich? Take your clothes off. Rin no, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you can't go on. Yeah, I, I'm very happy you read that one. Yeah. And Rich, no. <laughs> so the first line is literally just take your clothes off. Yeah. Hold on. A now it's hard to get back on the yeah, shelf. Yeah, you got it, bud. Yeah, just just put it on the table. It's fine. Oh, up. You got it. You got it. All right. That's that's going there. Okay. All right, Rich. What, what do you think about the oh, Jesus? T- t- <laughs> what do you think about the line? It's certainly impactful. Get you right there. Like what? It's Get a. It's a, what? it's a quick. It's a quick. It's a quick starter. I'd say C. Yeah, probably. Now, where in C is the, que- is the question? I think I. I honestly think. Mm, above malice. That's B. That's B here. Oh, that is B. Yeah, too. if we're looking at C, let's go right behind fourth wing. Okay, fair enough. Let's go behind fourth wing um, because it's still asked enough of a question like, hmm, who's saying this? Why are they saying this? It's nothing crazy. To be fair, not there's the whole thought is probably the whole paragraph is probably better. Of course. But we're judging it just off that. First line. That's off yeah. that. We're being sticklers. All right. Well, then. to be fair, we're being sticklers sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we're being biased sticklers. Yes. We are not being fair. That That is true. <laughs> This next one by but Mark Lawrence. It's our, it's our show. We don't have to be fair if we don't want to. Like, yeah, we, we there have is, this newfound liberty. If you feel wronged in how we're operating ourselves, remember that this is not a democracy because democracy is cringe. This is our show. We'll do it with. We'll do with it what we want. And if if you're ever like in a fight or anything with your loved one, your colleague, just remember, democracy is cringe. No, I was going to say teeter matter. We each have our own phrase that we like. And that, that's our phrase we're trying to TM and get like to the point where okay, yeah, it's it's our it's our word. Uh, what a, what what phrase do I Richard want to be known for? And it's democracy is cringe. And mine is, you teeter my totter. We are not the same. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. I love Mark Lawrence, but oh, you don't like his <laughs> prose. No, his prose is great. This was a hard book to try and read. I oh. could I read the first chapter and put it down. Oh, this is the brutal book, right? Yeah, this is the brutal book. Do you remember the opening line? No, not particularly. Because it's not that gruesome. Uh, well, maybe it is. Okay. Oh, actually, it's a little bit gruesome. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Ravens. Always the ravens. They settled on the gables of the church even before the injured became the dead. That's a real good line. It is a real good line. It's a good line. B, uh, we're going, we're going B below Black Tongue, I think. Nah, below. Do you remember how Abercrombie. good Black Tongue was? Oh, below. Okay, I'll give you below Abercrombie, but definitely in that B range. Yeah, that's a good line. I, I yeah, Mark Lawrence is gonna be. He, he's up there on some in in my top twenty favorite authors, top ten. He's up there. I love Mark Lawrence. Yeah. But man, I couldn't do that book series. That that was a choice. It was just too brutal. Yeah. No. Th- there's sometimes some books just aren't for you. I hope it's for you. But yeah, I can't do it. No recommend from Richard. Yeah. No, I can't do it. I can't recommend that book. <laughs> this one you definitely will recommend. Yep. The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Mm-hmm. Okay. Full recommend. 
Full recommend. Opening line. Do we need to read it? Just SD up top of it. <laughs> Ready for the opening line? Yeah. This is The Princess Bride. This is my favorite book in all the world, though I have never read it. Bottom of S. Uh, you know, I, I love the opening line and everything, but I'm going to be a little bit of a stickler. So it's great. It's is so it good. great because of our nostalgia it's, for I it? I think it's more yeah. great because it's the Princess Bride rather than it being a blow your mind opening line. That's fair. Let's go. Let's realistically go top of B. Bear with me. It's great. I actually, mm, I'd put it below Name of the Wind. Okay, let's do that. That's fair. But yeah, if we're just talking about Princess Bride again, we're only judging the opening lines, not yeah. the books as a whole. Not the true. So you know, we we have to okay. be like that. This next one is one of. Do you my, want to read this one? I want to read it. All right, because it's one of my favorite opening lines period, ever out of all of these. No, it, on a personal preference level, yeah. I absolutely love this. All right, here you go. This uh, is this is going to be hard to get off the shelf. Oh, you got this. Uh, so this book is another one by Mark Lawrence. It is Red Sister. It's book one of the Ancestor trilogy, or the Book of the Ancestor, book one. Jesus, a lot oh. of books here. Th okay. This is a fantastic opening line. So this is Red Sister. All right, Rich. I know you love this one. This this is gonna I be. I also just oh. love this series. It's great. Oh. All right. It is important when killing a nun to ensure that you bring an army. Of sufficient size. Yeah. In all honesty, that's perfect. Yeah. That's a perfect first line. There's no fat on that line. It does everything. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to break this down. Of all our five categories, yeah. it does everything. Yeah. It hits all of it. Okay. From the beginning, tone, emotional impact. You get this action, have you this kind of grimmer world, like the fact that you have to kill a nun, this army, like so. I feel this grimness, this grand scale of it. I know I'm going to get some action from this story. Already I'm, setting the tone. You're there. Character wise, you know it's about a nun, but it's about nuns that can somehow take on armies. They'd be and I'm like, ass. who are these nuns? I want to know more about these nuns. Yeah. Then, plot wise. You know, okay, it's clearly leading to, for some some part in this story, mm. there is going to be a nun, and an army is going to go against this nun. Why? Why are they bringing an army against a nun? You got to know why. Dialogue-wise, it's just trim and fat. There's this... There's no fluff. There's no fluff on here. It is such a great piece of dialogue, great piece of prose. World building. World building? Combat nuns. What what kind of world can spawn combat nuns? Because it's clearly not our world. This ain't ours. So is this a high fantasy, low fantasy, sci-fi? I don't know. It could be anything. But it sets a curious temptation for the rest of this world. It does it everything. It does it all. I love it. S tier? Yes. Where an S tier? Are we going above Eustace Scrub with Narnia? Are we going above Harry Potter? Above Gunslinger? Above Tolkien? I don't know. I put it in above Lord of the Rings. Oh! Mark Lawrence wrote a better first line than J.R.R. Tolkien in The Fellowship of the Ring. Are you for real? Yeah, 100%. Do you want me to... That's near perfection. Do you like, it me, is perfection. Do you want me to reread Tolkien's first line? Just, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. That's great. That's great. Um, it is important when killing a nun to ensure that you bring an army of sufficient size. You know you are pandering to my action-heavy, dumb, yeah. mindless entertainment brain, and I believe it! Let's go all the way to the top! <laughs> oh, God. Honestly, you bring... Okay, that's first line. Already that's, fantastic. You add just a second line, because Tolkien yeah. we gave a couple lines. In okay, there. give another line. It is important when killing a nun to ensure that you bring an army of sufficient size. For Sister Thorn of the Sweet Mercy Covenant, Lano Tassius brought 200 men. For, okay, you listen. add, so Rich, all the stuff I talked about, Rich, finer detail in the second, and mm, wonderful. I love it. 
the passions exuding, I'll give you it. I'll give you yeah. it. Yeah. Because that is a fantastic line. It's perfect. There, there is nothing wrong with the line. That's the no. problem. It is perfect. It is perfect. It is perfect. And how, nothing do, wrong. how do you compare perfect with other perfect things? One perfect thing is more perfect than another perfect thing. Yeah. So we're putting that. That hits. That's in our top three. It goes The Hobbit, Eye of the World, then Red Sister by Mark Lawrence Ooh. so far. And you know what? One of the Discworld books coming up will be the number one. It is my number one okay. on this list. I'm excited. Um, and it's not this next one. This next one is Small Gods, which is freaking fantastic. Fantastic. Book. Highly recommend book. Oh, Richard and I, we actually reviewed this one on the channel, didn't we? We did. We if did. you're interested in seeing our review of that book, you can click the card or something description. There's or something up it's there. It's somewhere. It popped up on your screen. Exactly. Click now, that now one. this is the one and only Terry Pratchett, Small mm -hmm. Gods, Discworld, book number 13. And you don't have to read them in order, so this isn't a spoiler for previous books or anything. So here it is. Now consider the tortoise and the eagle. The tortoise is a ground-living creature. It is impossible to live nearer the ground without being under it. Its horizons are a few inches away. It has about a, as good as a turn of speed as you need to hunt down a lettuce. It has survived while the rest of evolution flowed past it by being, on the whole, no threat to anyone and too much trouble to eat. And then... There is the eagle. And there's a whole description of the eagle I won't get into, but that is just beautiful. It is. It's wonderful. Somewhere in S. It's somewhere in S. I think above Gunslinger, below Fellowship. That is my personal take. I'll accept that one. Mainly because you gave me Red Sister. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I don't know what it is, mm. but maybe above Fellowship. Maybe. Maybe. Because it's it's just preference. Okay, if we just factor in preference, I do like small gods. Let's inch it up. Let's inch okay. it up. Okay? Because so, something about how comfortable... The both of them make you comfortable. But what Discworld also does, it it's the structure of talking about the tortoise, then the eagle, and the juxtaposition you're about to get. We didn't finish reading the rest of the line. It's but also the tort oh, a little bit of funny. Yeah. There's little jokes in there the entire... You know, like, the horizon... Uh, being low to the ground and hunting it, for lettuce, hunting for lettuce. Yeah, I just it's it got that gets me chuckles. It, yes, throughout the whole thing. it evokes smiles and comfort, and it does mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Terry. Oh. And that soon. there's another Terry Pratchett book in here, and it, it will be our number one. Okay, I promise you. And is you have a book I've read. No, and oh, it I'm will excited. be our number one. It is my favorite first line. Ooh, but before, okay. okay. But this next one is the Sword of Shannara. Okay, by Terry Brooks. Okay, ready for this? Mm -hmm. The sun was already sinking into the deep green of the hills to the west and the valley, the red and gray pink of its shadows touching the corners of the land when Flick Amsford began his descent. Very, it's just fine. I'm thinking D. D? Yeah, D. Yeah. Didn't, didn't it's do anything there. crazy. It's, it exists. It's prose, and it's not written badly. It's just written. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that that's definitely some pros right there. It, it, that that's that's definitely a first line. Like I think they used all twenty six letters <laughs> and put them on there. I, I haven't read the book. I don't know, but it, it's moving on. I don't think anyone's gonna complain about this on that one. That's... I want to see a diehard Shannara Chronicles <laughs> fan or like the, the sort of Shannara trilogy just commenting yeah. down below, going, "I came for this book, <laughs> and you just my favorite book." <laughs> I, I, I love, you haven't read it? No. If anyone has read it, let us know what you think, if it's worth it. Because I've heard it's very Tolkien adjacent. Like it was building off the the hype of Fellowship and it was very, very similar. I think it was written in the 70s, something like that. Mm -hmm. This next book by Terry Goodkind is Wizard's First Rule. That's the book title. I have, okay, I have a bias against Terry Goodkind because he said some very unkind and mocking things to. Robert Jordan, while he was dying of cancer, and go on. Yeah, I, I'm, what happened I'm here? A, I'm not a fan of him. So what did generally. he? So Terry Goodkind said he mocked. Yeah, what, it, what it's did he do now? Basically, he was supposed to be on. Robert Jordan was supposed to be on a panel yeah. with Terry Goodkind, and Robert Jordan couldn't make it because of health complications. He had a heart problem. There, he had to go to the hospital again, and during the whole. Th there was a moment where someone asked um, Terry Good kind of question, and he mentioned something about how 
um, at least at, at least he has the the good health to show up or like he, the oh. med ba- yeah something all like at least I have my health to show up here and it was really mu- bad was taste a bad taste joke of like the guy's still alive and I I honestly I I probably need to get the context of that more specifically assuming you're correct with all that like you gotta admit i've never said something that bad to you right close very close just think you said bad things to me but they were almost always true and that's why they were hurtful (laughs) (laughs) so it hits different yeah so and then the other stuff with terry good kind of when he asked someone asked him like hey what book uh what book would you recommend in the fantasy genre and he said well, I'd suggest Wizard's First Rule, my book. And they all laughed. The whole audience was like, <laughs> that's funny. But seriously, what other fantasy book would you recommend? And he said again, like, my book. He didn't have a single other, He couldn't recommend a single other person's book. Really? Yeah. So he's that much of an ego? Huge. He doesn't... There was even quotes of him talking about how he doesn't believe that he wrote fantasy books. He just writes fantastic literature, so he doesn't consider himself a fantasy author. Oh. And that, his books are just so original and unique in the genre that he has made his own genre. It's a fantasy book. So you're it, you're coming into reading this first line highly critical. I want to hate You it. want to pick this apart. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty to pick apart. Are you ready? <laughs> you're about to have a field day. Good. Here's Wonderful. the first line of this author you vitriolically hate. I'm using that word again, vitriolic. I like... Mm-hmm. Okay. You ready? Yep. It was an odd-looking vine. After all that talk of what you hate so much about this author, and that's his fantastical, I'm different. I'm different than all the <laughs> fantasy authors. I'm fantastical. It was an odd-looking vine. You want original hack? I don't know. I'm just assuming he's a bad yeah. guy. Share in my hate. Listen, this is something we can share together. I know nothing about this man until this moment, and you now I hate just him. Just trust me. Trust me on my hate. You know you what? You know what I hate details. more is that he shares names with the one and only Pratchett. He does not deserve the name Terry. He doesn't need the Terry. He's just mm. good kind, and he's not good. He's bad kind. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I think, you, sir. I think we have our first uh, Wheel, Wheel of Time, Time season, season two, two episode, episode eight. eight. Mm-hmm. You know what? Are we judging it mainly because of the things Richard said about his personal? Oh, additional thing. I have another bad thing about him. Do it. Say it. Great. So apparently, I I did look this up. He had a Facebook post where he was mocking his own book cover for a book and said, like, yeah, this book cover sucked. I really hate my own book cover. Okay. And you think, oh, okay. And the the artist said – commented down below who actually did the work and said well you worked with me on this work like i asked for your opinions on things and you gave me the go-ahead when we were working on this if you hated it so much why didn't you work with me to make it better you said everything was fine and basically started like lambasting his own artist kind of publicly damn and just so unprofessional like can you imagine that working with someone, like working with an artist and doing this whole process and going through the approvals with him? Yeah. And then at the end of it, just going like, oh, yeah, the guy I worked with, he fucking sucks. He's a terrible artist. That's awful. That's a terrible that's, thing to do. That's a horrible. Yeah, it's incredibly unprofessional. I, I've just gained an enemy today. <laughs> yeah. I, I will die fighting with you. I can't, is he still alive? No, he died. Okay, now we can really <laughs> make fun of him. <laughs> Wait, that's that's a little worse. <laughs> he died actually pretty recently too. I think oh. within, like a oh, year, really? year or two ago, I think. I, okay, assuming you're, sympathies I'm, for family. Like, yeah, okay, yeah sympathies, here's the sympathy, thing. Yeah, yeah. We are falling in the same trap as him of being very rude and dismissive. Of you're right. I let's be respectful. I completely see the irony of what we <laughs> criticized him on, and then what we are doing. Yeah, it's, it's totally it. there. It's totally there. If we, yeah. Listen, my <laughs> hate toward him was just a supportive friend to you. Understood. I was picking, I was picking you over the dead person you're making fun of. <laughs> this is, 
This is not a good PR episode, folks. No, no. This, this, is, this is if we ever become real successful, this so, is the one they're going to come. We, back so to. we have nothing to worry about. We're coasting yeah. clear. They're going to go. This, they're going to go back to the episode, the part two of ranking fantasy first lines and find at the thirty whatever minute mark. Yeah, that's totally happening. Yeah, uh, I honestly I Play feel pretty clip. confident that we could. Uh, like I could run for some type of office because. And like I've said, some they could pull some clips from here. I don't think any political opponent would be willing to go through the details of our podcast <laughs> to find the controversial clips of me. They'd be like, "Oh God, oh God, fantasy oh. line r- part two. They're Jesus. still on a rant. They haven't even said the next book yet. Can they just get on with it? Jesus, they'll never find Christ. it. It's oh. great. They're just like, they're grimacing. <laughs> <laughs> I love our niche. It's can you imagine if we decided to start it like a general podcast on just oh. our opinions on the political landscape? Imagine that. Oh my God. Here's, here's what my thoughts on the thing. Ugh. On, it's on too like, Yeah. Listen to two random stories. I've done nothing in my life <laughs> to justify anyone listening to my opinions on anything political. It's not worth it. My opinions are not even that worthwhile to myself. I don't even value my own opinions that highly, politically speaking. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Listen to this. Book, you, the whole reason to put the bookshelf up is it's <laughs> the one thing that I, I can say I know something about it. I've read a, a few fantasy books. I can say an opinion and people go, hey, well, he has read a lot. Maybe I disagree with him, but he has read a, a good amount of books. He must know something look at the stuff behind him Appar- the proof is in the pudding I, right did there. Sure. I he, read something he did a thing <laughs> like you want to make policy decisions and like, our laundry's not even done oh this Come thing on. that happened in the news makes me so upset and oh you guys need to go out there and do something and by do something i mean say something on twitter and that'll get us hashtag going and then and- join our patreon you hate people that do that <laughs> oh, like yeah. plug their Constantly patreon all the time their own little they're sites. idiots <laughs> trying to make money money <laughs> comes full circle <laughs> however i'm so jealous i'm hmm. so jealous of all those news youtube people where they have and like can you imagine wake up in, in the morning and just like the content's I, there the content's there just, i'm what, just gonna what react today? to the news okay they have to spend about gener- i'm gonna be generous they may spend about an hour Maybe two researching the news. They read articles and then they like cross reference an article, like, hey, let's look at this side and this side of an issue and we'll come to a conclusion. And okay, and then I'm going to present it. Yeah, yeah. We have to read 40 hours of a book if it's a Sanderson. Hence like, why you're listening to a part two of a tier list. <laughs> because we had to stretch this content out a little bit more. Guys. <laughs> The time commitment to read a book and then review it is much higher than, oh, I watch the hey, news. mind you, books we love yeah, most of the time. I love it. It's fantastic, but it's just, you know, large time commitment to the, it, the review. It and, the, and then also yeah. get your notes down and try to, Despite our several tangents and rat, rants when we review a book, we typically have so much more down on our notes. Oh, yeah. That we never even touch on because then we just screw the plot summary we just wrote down. Ugh. I need to focus on Richard mispronouncing a name. <laughs> and that's where we go. So, okay. Yeah. This was a little rambler rant here. <laughs> so where were we? We were, we were making fun of that guy. Okay. So we're, ba- we're back to Terry Goodkind. Yeah. Uh, Wheel Time Season 2, Episode 8 here. Gosh. On the bottom. Are we- where it belongs. All right. Next, next one. You ready? Yeah. The Pariah by Anthony Ryan. I like Anthony Ryan. Uh, I like we, re- we reviewed Pry on this channel as well, very early on. So it was mm-hmm. you know back in our infant days of the channel, very very early on. I have read the second book. Austin here is not. I, I yeah. bought the third. Let us know down below if you want me to read the third book, and then maybe I'll send it off to you to edit, and then you just mute. You just mute the whole thing. So just you wash your mouth. Spoiler exactly. Yeah, and then you can edit it without sound, and then it, pray that the sound quality comes out. I'm okay with that. Yeah. We'll just hope we'll, the comments will tell me if it came out okay. Yeah. So that would be a blind editing for Boston. Because the, for the prior of the book, I was just very whelmed. I liked it more than you on just because I was looking it through a different lens, but I can totally see why you didn't enjoy it as like, much. It was a dead fi- It was a dead average. Like, it's fine. Yeah. 
but the first line. Maybe it's not just fine. Here's what it is. The Priya, first line. Before killing a man, I always found it calming to regard the trees. That's a good line. As much as I don't love the book, solid line. Solid line. I'm thinking even right between, right below Black Tongue Thief and Head of Joe Abercrombie's first law, Blade itself, because the Black Tongue Thief had a very similar, very it's a similar thing. Very like, similar thing of, I'm about, you know, to, I'm about die. to die, but worse, I'm about to die with bastards. This one, before killing a man, I always found it go, has the same pattern recognition mm. to it. I think right below it. I'd agree with you. You agree? Okay. Let's do it right there in the B tier. Fair enough. And then the very next one is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Okay, you ready for this one? Is this the first book in the series or second? Uh, that's a great question. Let me see. Throne of Glass is Throne of Glass, Sarah J. Mass? I feel like this is the second book. Or d- We definitely didn't do this one before, did we? Uh, this is... No, this is the first book, I believe. Okay. Okay, we're, we're going to go through it. You ready? Mm-hmm. After a year of slavery in the salt mines of Endovir, Selina Sardothian was accustomed to being escorted everywhere in, se- in shackles and at sword point. It's fine. Um, Do you think it's better than her other one we did, The Court of Thorn and Roses? Honestly, I put it top of D. Top of personally. D? Sort of it just doesn't have any pizzazz to think of. And I know that's weird that I'm coming from. Like, it has all the things I'm talking about. Like, topsy. question, tone. It just is. I get you. I've I've seen this tone before done better. Poppy War. Uh, it, the book, I guess not the first line, but like Poppy War kind of has a similar tone, but not. It. I want something unique and yeah, interesting from it. Again, not horrible, but you know, we get, there has to be some D's. There's got to be something, and we got to be sticklers on it. Look at how many S's we have, though. I mean, these are fantastic books and opening lines. Creme de la creme. So, creme de la creme. Yes, I'm. I'm with you. Doesn't do anything spectacular. This next book is from an author that neither of us have read, Guy Gavriel K. But I've heard. I listened to it on Sanderson's podcast, and Sanderson talked so freaking highly of this author, saying he was one of his favorite living authors. Him and Dan Wells were talking about it, but Guy Gavrick is apparently fantastic, has really unique stories, and this is his book, Tigana, which I'm sure you've heard of. Mm -hmm. This is the first line of Tigana. Both moons were high, dimming the light of all but the brightest stars. Now, I don't think it's anything spectacular, at least that alone, if we're just judging the first line. It's good. It's good. It tells you, hey, there's multiple moons. We're in a different world. What else does it evoke out of you that you think should boost it? Where, where do you think? What's your what's your gut reaction for Tigana? My gut is above fourth wing. Above four. I'll give you that. And what's that below right there? So it's above. Okay, yeah, above fourth wing, below stuff like the Lies of Lock Lamora. Okay, uh, you ready for the? Oh yeah, the best one. This is the truth by Terry Pratchett. Okay. Okay. This, I'm going to say before asking where you want this, this is going above The Hobbit, S tier, number one. Okay. I'm setting your expectations so high, and it's going to beat them. You've never read The Truth, have you? I haven't. This is Sanderson's favorite Discworld novel. Favorite novel. uh, One of his favorite novels ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the opening line. The rumor spread through the city like wildfire, which had happened quite often Spread through Akmar Pork since its citizens had learned the word fire insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I push a little, I'll say it once more. The rumors spread through the city like wildfire, which had quite often spread through Akmar Pork since its citizens had learned the words fire insurance. <laughs> can you can you get a better tone? Can you get more fun? Can you get more world building of the characters and the jovialness and the whimsy and make I, it get a genuine laugh? And in the first line of a book, a genuine laugh. I love... Okay. I've read more books that take place in Ankh-Morpork Pork than you. Yeah. And that just fits so much of a Discworld since they learned the word fire and that's so it. funny. He's, he's awesome. Honestly, Ankh-Morpork is probably up there. If you had to list of the 
worst fantasy places to live. Mm-hmm. Ankh-Morpork Pork is probably up there, but it's in that weird gray area of it's awful, but also I probably have a good time. I would have a I would have so many stories to tell of how awful it was. I <laughs> They'd love be like it. wearing badges of honor. Like I yeah. survived Ankh-Morpork. Pork. <laughs> yeah. And here's my story. Where is this going? Realistically speaking, I I I love like this it less than heart. Red Sister. I still like. I'm Red I'm gonna Sister fight more. you to put this. I think it's above Small Gods. It is, but I'm gonna fight you to put it above Red Sister for Little Rock Paper Scissors. Why don't you convince me? Why do you think so? Because you know how I went into the whole yes. detail of how uh, the first line of yes, Red yes. Sister was one trim, like no fat on that. And it did so much. It did. It added something to every yep. one of our five categories. Yes. How does this one do it? Emotional impact hits way higher than the Red Sister one does out of pure laugh. I think the laugh you get out of this first line, emotionally speaking, mm-hmm. genuine laugh, genuine good time, and you're already there. The Red Sister line still does a great job at that. Not mm-hmm. diminishing that. Not diminishing you, Richard. But okay. one, great emotion. Two, for the characters, it pushes the tertiary characters of the citizens. The Ankh-Mork Pork pushes them all to being these, this, these whimsical, like all of them are kind of rams, rascals the, that would actually take advantage and the depravity of the citizens that they would be so immoral to do this. It's, to, it's to, the <laughs> exact opposite of the hobbits. Yeah. The but hobbits it, it, are... But they still have the same whimsy yes, and which, heart. Which goes to the world-building yeah. aspect, pushes the whimsy and the tone of the world. And mm-hmm. you're already mentioning Akmork Pork itself. And then you have plot. It's moving the plot in this rumor. What rumor? The question of this rumor spread through the city like wildfire. What is the rumor mm. that this plot is pushing forward? Hmm, I wonder what that rumor is. And then the dialogue and prose, no fat to this. And adding on, it has it, it has a little parentheses as well. So it adds, to, when you're reading it physically, adds a little layer of, you know, the rumor spread through the city like wildfire, which it quite often spread. You know, a little paragraph. And it's written perfectly, succinctly, no fat. I still disagree with you, but I'm willing to rock, paper, scissors over it. It's close. Okay. I earned the right. Yep. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors. scissors. Shoot. Again, you did paper, I... just like last time. <laughs> <sighs> Give me that. So we got top three now are The Hobbit, The Eye of the World, and then Terry Pratchett's The Truth. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> uh, notice how there's two Discworlds in the top five, as Good. it should. As it should be. <laughs> and now, coming after that, is Twilight. Great. Right? Which, I have not read Twilight. I've only... I read half of it. In middle... At... Yes, you did, didn't you? Yeah. In middle school? No. I think elementary? It, elementary school. Must have been. I tried. Yeah, that, that was a mistake. Why? Was it bad? No, I, it, different expectations. Mm. This. Uh, oh, like, you thought it would be cool vampire well, okay. stuff? And then... I was reading a book in the library. Yep. And this girl this. came to me and yes. said, like, hey, yep, yep. You, uh, you should read this book. Yep. And I was like, okay, I'll recommend you this, like, I may have recommended her Pen Dragon or some Hardy Boy book. I don't know yeah. what I recommended. Mm-hmm. I said, you read this. I'll read the book you're reading. She said, oh, yeah, it's about vampires. And I'm like, vampires are cool. I know Dracula. <laughs> yep. Dracula's neat. I- I'm looking forward to this kind of spooky, like, vampire monster. And yeah. then reading about halfway through the book going like, where's the... Where's the vampire? Where's the vampires? Where's the, where's the cool stuff? When- when's it going to... When's it going to get to the <laughs> vampire stuff? They never got to the vampire stuff. Well, my idea of vampire stuff. And yeah. so I, I put it down. And you're like, you know, you're 10, 11 years old. Yeah. So. For true fans of the podcast, you said this in a previous episode. I don't know which it was. Oh, yeah. But those... We those don't remember. Are, no. I don't remember. Yeah. But here's the opening line of Twilight. Okay. Okay. I'd never given much thought to how it would die, though I'd had reason enough in the last few months. But even if I had... I would not have it, have imagined it like this. Um, it's very similar feelings I'm getting to Throne of Glass. Was it the other one that you were, you know, the threat of dying or the threat of? It's just kind of simply done. It, it's giving you the oh, it's, it's just simply giving you the question of what, what is going on, but it doesn't do it in a 
creative or fun way. D tier? I think so. D tier above Throne of Glass or below? Maybe below. 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 I love how we have Shannara still down there. Yeah. <laughs> As it should be. Right. <laughs> okay, this next one is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I bought this at Barnes & Noble. Haven't read it yet, but oh. I, I like the cover and it was neat. You have a book that I don't have? I think I... like. That's rare. I, I no, actually, no, like, I think you know, I, I own I, almost all the books that you own. I know. You know why I didn't admit this? Because I didn't want you to buy it and one up me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, this is my secret one of my stash of like, this Richard can never find out. But now I just let it, let it <laughs> you out. You lost it. Damn it. So this is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Here's the opening line. Our dragon doesn't eat the girls he takes, no matter what the stories they tell outside our valley. That's a great line. Fantastic line. That's a fantastic line. Uh, gut reaction is somewhere bottom of A, maybe. I think it's above Men at Arms and Gardens of the Moon and going. Mm. I think it's right between your Susanna Clark and your Terry there in A. Because listen to this mm. line again. Our dragon doesn't eat the girls he takes, no matter what stories they tell at Sardar Valley. That does so much for me on the intrigue of, okay, doesn't eat the girls he takes. So the dragon takes girls. Other people think it's dubious and it's eating the girls. For, so for some reason, people outside, but our character and our the culture we're in or so forth, it's a friendly dragon to them. And mm -hmm. why are they friendly? I have a lot of questions. And it gives a lot of inklings to the world as well. It's, it's just really well done. It's a great line. Mm. Okay. I'll, I'll go with above going postal. In the A for sure. Now this next one, the one and only, The Way of Kings. By Brandon Sanders. It's going to be a good one. Want more, me to read it this time? You, I you, haven't read one in a you while know what? here. Go ahead. Go you ahead and pull steal my thunder. I'd love to. Um, but hold on. Let me open it to it because there's multiple first lines. There's the prelude. There's chapter one. I'm going to have you read the prologue because this is the one to read. Okay. Um, skip all the, you know, the quote in the beginning. I, yeah, I understand. You got it. Right the there. The actual line. The actual line. This is wonderful. Go ahead. Get us in the mood, Rich. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to mispronounce the names here. You got My this. apologies. I believe in you. Only read the first line. That's it. All right. Zeth, son of... Oh, God. <laughs> Zeth, son, son, Valano, truthless of Shinovar, wore white on the day he was to kill a king. Oh, yeah. Before we judge that line, I want to do a quick shout out again to Jamie, who got us this book. Yeah. This, this Way of Kings version is signed by Brandon Sanderson himself, and Jamie got this for us. Thank you so much. This Thank you so much, such, Jamie. And Sanderson said up here, for two to ramble life before death, and he had the two wrong because <laughs> he... As he should. He's like, who the hell is Tudor Ramble? <laughs> and Sanderson, if anyone's for Sanderson's team listening, please get him here. We are obsessed. So we would love, we would love to talk about his books with him. That I again, would, this is a callback to. We've talked about this several times. We have. This entire channel is a front to one day talk with Sanderson. Yes, we are currently like one person removed. Several times In several over. facets, right. In several facets. I, we have now talked with people who have talked with Sanderson. What are like direct friends with him and colleagues and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're almost there. We're just not there yet. We're <laughs> so close. We've talked with his student. Uh, and friend, uh, Brian McClellan. Brian McClellan. Yeah. It, it, we interviewed him for his book. Great, great author. Really loved his stuff. We talked with him. I went on the Dusty Wheels show, and he's went to Sanderson's house and talked to them. Literally a week later several. after you saw him. Yes. I know. Oh. I wish. I don't know why I wasn't invited to the uh, Wheel of Time uh, season finale. I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think Sanderson would have liked to have me as an ally in that whole I, thing. I, I think would, so. It would have been me and Sando against the boys. <laughs> that's that's what it would have been. That would have been so lovely me. to see. <laughs> oh, what a... You guys would have been bros. We're, we're, we're so close. We're gonna get we're gonna get him on an interview one of these days. Oh yeah, you understand that 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 will be, I, I I won't be doing anything like if we ever set that up. I won't be doing anything for most of my life until that is done because I will be researching, prepping, yep. like it'll getting be the, actually fantastic questions. It will and be the most research mm. and effort I have ever put into anything in my life. 
Oh, I kid you not. I will be there with you. I won't sleep. Yeah, th- this would be we won't sleep. This the won't. thing of our lives. Nothing will top it. No, no. <gasps> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no. There's no living off it. Like, think about like it, if Terry Pratchett no, was still alive, no, then that. I even mean this to say, like, hey, if we had George R. R. Martin, who was more famous, or Stephen King, who was more famous. Yeah, it would be like it would be. So yes, that would be. I guess a more. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so mean. S- say it. <laughs> but if George, if we did an interview with George R. R. Martin, I'd be like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> 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 he, he just look at it like neato <laughs> like that's cool that's nice. great <laughs> alright Rich I would have I would definitely be more excited than that but you would no here's I the, would no don't get me wrong George R. R. Martin Stephen King all the most famous authors out there would be mind boggling and insane but there's a certain connection that we have to Sanderson of what started our love for reading again the emotional yeah. connection and love I have for Sanderson's work and what he does as an author and as a person and how he conducts himself far beyond reaches the fame of other people. Sure. So, and here's the only thing I would say, I would, if Terry Pratchett was alive, I'd be more excited yes. for that. Yeah, yeah. And also I've seen some interviews from because Terry has that wit. He mm. very easily can make you, he can make interviewers like look real stupid oh. and like, you really just have to be on top of your game. Right. In we Sanderson, never... I think, is just kind and he doesn't do that to other people. He's incredibly knowledgeable, but yeah. he doesn't constantly have that wit turned on in an interview. Right. He's right. really laid back and chill. So I wouldn't be as scared. I would just be anxious. Yeah. You know that I mean? would be such a day. Such a day. <laughs> Anyways, the line itself. Yep. Seth Sonvans Valano. Truthless of Shinovar wore white on the day he was to kill a king. It's a good line. It's just I think it's excellent. I think it's I think we go top of A with that line. Top right of A. Yes. I think we go top of A. Just I'll, I'll be with you. I'll be yeah, with you on that one. It is an excellent line about for okay, let me drag it up there first. Yeah. Top of A. I think you'd say it for the same reasons as me, but you're obviously asking the plot question of why is he going to kill a king? Why is it important Why that he's is wearing white? white? Mm-hmm. And the name itself, Zeth Son Son Valano, Truthless of Shinovar, gets you prepared since we've read the Way of the Kings, of course. Way of Kings, of course. It sets you up for how intense the world building is. Sure. So it is appropriate that the very first two things you learn are this crazy name and this, he's a Truthless of Shinovar, which, fascinatingly enough... <laughs> Uh, so a lot of that previous part you just didn't hear. <laughs> that was some spoilers. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> want to go to the last one? Sure. Okay. A Wizard of Earth Sea by Ursula K. Le Guin, a book we've been recommended so many times, and is a a staple in the genre, mm-hmm. which we have to get to. She has influenced quite a few. Of our modern fantasy authors. Yeah. This is the opening line. Let's see if it convinces us. This is the very last one. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to have part three and four and five. Okay. A Wizard of Earthsea. The island of Gaunt, a single mountain that lifts its peak a mile above the storm-wracked Northeast Sea, is a famous land for wizards. That's a great line. Solid line. It's a solid line. Where are we officially mm-hmm. putting this? Mm-hmm. Where, where are we? Fi- oh, oh, I'm feeling above Pariah. Above, where's Pariah? Yeah. Right yeah. about there. Right below Black Tongue. Yeah. That puts it down. So we have, it looks like our final list right here you can see on screen. We have most are in B. We have a lot in S. The only Wheel of Time Season 2 Episode <laughs> 8 tier is Terry Goodkind, which that rant, you heard why. <laughs> yep. And then, something misborn in the F tier. I can't believe it. But our top of the top, our <laughs> creme de la creme <laughs> of lines. I want to read off our top three. Okay. One last time. And then... We'll, we'll conclude this because we have to leave with that good feeling. Our S tiers. Our number three of all time is Terry Pratchett's The Truth as a fantasy opening line. And the truth goes like this. The rumor spread through the city like wildfire, which had quite often spread through Ankh Pork since its citizens had learned the words fire insurance. Fantastic. Fantastic line. And then in second place, we have Richard 
What is it? The Wheel of Time, the Eye of the World. Oh, can I? Can you? Let's see if you can, can do I this. Try and do. Oh, I'm try, try. Try to say the opening of the Eye of the World of all the Wheel of Time books by memory. Come on. The Wheel of Time turns, and ages come and pass. Where, damn it, I can never, where legend fades to myth, oh. and myth, um, long forgotten, long forgotten, that, ah, dang it, I can never do it. One day. It's too much. All right, I'll here it is. It eventually. The wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age called the third age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose in the mountains of mist. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time, but it was a beginning. Perfect. Actually perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I love how our number three is like just a funny Discworld opening line. The number no. two is just this intense, grand, scoping fantasy. And then our number one, I don't think it's any surprise, is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole. And that means comfort. Ah, comfort. Like a good two to ramble episode. Just nice and cozy. See Richard and I comfortable next to each other. Um, we're going to see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.